Hi everyone. I literally just poured energy drink all over myself, but um, it's fine. Uh, tonight I am going live with Justin. We are change and we are going to talk about flat earth, which is kind of exciting because um, obviously it's Easter and this is actually kind of a biblical topic. Um, and as you all know, I've, I've talked about this topic before with Dino, um, Valette, and I'm kind of like 50, 50 flat round. So we'll wait for him to hop on. I hope everyone had a great Easter. I didn't do that much today. I did get a lot of messages though. Um, hey, Coastal Baseball. I did get a lot of messages though from people telling me Easter's pagan, bunnies are bad, eggs are bad, symbolism and stuff. I get it, you guys, but I don't think that y'all need to send those messages on Easter. Like maybe send them earlier in the week or send them tomorrow and let me know for next year. But like you don't need to rain on people's Easter parade um, to tell them about demonic symbolism and everything. That's just my two cents. Oh, hey, back. Thank you, so. y'all. Hey, what's going on? What is How up? Are you? How's it going? Good. Yes, Did you? Are you having a, a good Easter? Relaxing day. How about yourself? Oh yeah, Relax. yeah, yeah. It was too. It was good. The weather was a little crappy here. I don't know where you're at in the country, but it was a little, a little gloomy for Florida for a Florida day. Oh, oh okay. yeah, same. I'm in Louisiana. It was super. Yeah, it's been raining like the last three days, like you know, pouring and stuff. It's not raining today, so it wasn't too bad. But it was still like yeah. super wet outside. Yeah, so, but all good. Makes I mean, for a good lazy and, Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm super excited to talk about this topic. I've talked about it with other people. No, I don't know, Gino, sure. Dino, Valette. I had, him. oh, okay. Yeah, he, he's big on flat earth. So I had him on like a few months back and we talked about it. I just like, okay, so mm -hmm. I've been kind of 50, 50 flat round. And after I talked to him, I was like, okay, I'm leaning flat. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, I don't know. Now I'm like 75% oh. round, 25% flat. So maybe yeah. I can answer I'd be some happy of those to. questions. I mean, and I get think we all have like common hangups with it because there's so much that we were ingrained yeah. with about like our current system. So there's just, there was always hangups for me too. It took me, I think like a whole year for me to even have the confidence to talk about it publicly. Um, Cause I just wanted to get like, like oh. you know, all my bases covered and everything, yeah. but um. But yeah, I'd be ha I don't know where you want to start or what you all have kind of covered, but um, I mean, I'll be happy to get uh, start wherever you want, I guess. Okay. okay, well, I'll tell you what my recent hang up was. Okay, so I, yeah, the earth seems, I, I feel like it could be flat, could be round. And okay. I definitely don't think we went to the moon, like at all. No possibility. It, it's supposedly 230 right. some thousand miles away. Does it make, Mars is like a million miles away and they try to pretend we went to Mars it's like no it's like we didn't go to Mars just stop a, mil a million miles away no um but the thing with the flat okay so I was like I guess the problem is is that when you look up into the sky everything up there is round so then I was like okay it's kind of like how you know <laughs> like my son mm -hmm. he can kind of see like his hands you know and he sees me like my hands look like mom's hands, like just right. pretend like there was no mirrors or anything. He would be able to say, uh, I'm probably what mom is, not what right. the dog is. I get where you're going, Parts of myself going, I can yeah. see about the same. Yeah, so, so that's what I was thinking. I was like, even if we don't have, we can't look back at the earth, anything like that. I'm like, we can kind of look around and be like, seems similar to what's probably up there. Those things are all around. Now, something that has come up recently that I talked to somebody about was, it, when it comes to the moon, they were like, well, you do never see the other side of the moon. So I was like, oh, darn, because you would think like the moon yeah. would at least somewhat rotate, right? Like, otherwise, it seems very fixed. So do you want to do you yeah, have like, you want to kind of start with one. these topics? Um, that was and... one that got me as well early on. And I think what you have to remember is like, we're yeah. sort of looking up into the sky to determine what is 
the ground beneath our feet. And I think also with flat earth, some people take like the flatter, the globe and they just make it flat as a pancake and throw it in the solar system model. And I think that's one of the biggest problems is, is that the entire system is misdescribed is how I would say it. A lot of people will say space is fake, satellites are fake. It's just different. It's misdescribed in my opinion. So I think all of the planets and the stars are, are, are all really up there. They're just not what we think. I don't think it's a place we can go land on. So I guess the analogy I'll use is it's like the pool table. All the balls are round, right? They're spherical. But the ball or the table is flat. So it's almost like saying, well, all the um, everything that I'm seeing here is spherical. So this must be as well. But like you said, your son's able to look back at himself. We can't look back at Earth unless we're a NASA astronaut. And so far, that appears to be fabricated. So like, what if, if we're just like oh, yeah. a pizza, you know, just the level floor. And like, I almost think of it as like, I'm in this room right now. And you know, we used to have like popcorn ceilings and like people would even put stars in their ceiling. People used to do that. Yeah, yeah, I remember I, mean, I had kids ceilings always like did that, that at some and point. So imagine like that's the stars in the sky and then the ground is the ground. Um, we're not one of those spherical objects like all the things in the sky. And I don't even believe that any of those are spherical. Maybe, maybe the moon, potentially, but I don't believe that, that, that Saturn and Jupiter and Mars are a place that you can go land a rocket ship. I think they're like energetic light that changes. For, it almost looks more like a light in water, if you ask me. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because um, all the photos, like, I don't know if you've ever gone to NASA's website yeah. and just, like, had a laugh or whatever, but all the photos, yeah, they'll be like, look at these pictures of Saturn. Right. I'm like, those are literally cartoons. Like, those don't anything like a photograph. They look like, did and then they're like, well, they come up with these insane things. They're like, the telescope could only right. interpret the light a certain way, and then we have to reinterpret it. I'm like, so it's exactly. a rendering. Like, it's not that a photograph. That was probably my, yeah, my biggest kind of hang up sure. in the or my biggest red flag for the globe model was where are all the pictures of Earth from space? You know, we go out uh, a night on the town with yeah. our friends and family and take like 20 pictures sometimes. And they took, they've taken zero. We're supposed to have tens of thousands of satellites. Uh, there's three things I always like to say you'll never find a photograph of. And that's an article from space, a satellite in space, or a picture yeah. of the whole Earth from space. Um, because they don't exist. They've, for whatever reason, they haven't taken them. And um, yeah, I just, I, that's, that's one of the biggest red flags is you'd have thousands, you'd have satellites that spent all day just live streaming the earth. By, uh, and they can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then especially if they were really good, they'd yeah. be able to see all the way down. Um, like the detail. So yeah, something weird about okay, there was this asteroid a while ago. And actually, like, I'll talk about asteroids for a second. So something very strange to me that I've never, no one's been ever been able to say like, yeah, I did that. Right. So when we supposedly went to the moon, did you think people could somewhat get out their home telescope and like watch the rocket? And they would be like, I saw the rocket. They tell us that there are mirrors on the moon placed there by the astronauts and that you can see the mirrors. I'm like, if you can see the mirrors, why couldn't you see some type of shadow near it or the rocket go, you know, it's the rocket ship, even if it doesn't have fire, you can see asteroids and asteroids are just a rock flying through space. You know, they, some of them are only the size of like a school bus. So I'm like, if you can see an asteroid, you should be able to been able to see some type of something, shadow, whatever, when this was all happening. No one has ever told me like, yeah, I, I watched it from my home telescope. I know. Everybody, or, or have any if pictures you ask someone from that generation, they'll say, oh, I heard it on the radio. That's most likely how people knew that they walked the moon. Yeah. Right. And that's very right. easy to fool people, as we know. But yeah, there's no, we never see, no one's ever like, oh, look at those satellites up there. Or look at the, the satellite, or watching, watching them go to the moon. They like go out of distance and then go around yeah. the earth in this weird trajectory, they say, and then they fly up there that we can't see. But you can zoom in with a nice camera yeah. that the public has access now and see fine details on the moon but we're not you're not ever catching any of those tens of thousands of satellites right uh, 
that's wild because then if you think oh yeah that's true so then if you think about it they're supposedly trying to go back i heard that there's going to be a woman somebody right. like di di diverse background in a canadian um also supposedly right. going on artemis too to the moon um actually i think that one might just yeah. fly around it but i i've been trying to yet get a home telescope so i can be like okay let's let's see this let's see the rocket fly around you know go near the moon behind the moon anything right. a speck show me anything you know um uh, i don't think we'll, we'll see anything and then supposedly after that they're supposed to go to the moon they'll probably be like we landed on the back okay right. like no, that's only <laughs> something and i truly believe like a I mean, lot of this stuff they never imagined that our optics would outgrow their lives that's the line I use. So we have a Nikon P900 and we can zoom into Mars and see it's a blinking light and no one's ever landing on a rock of dust, you know, like they claim. We can zoom in on the boats going over the horizon yeah. now and see that they weren't actually going over a curve. They're just going out of your line of sight into that vanishing point. And these things like looking up these yeah. astronaut videos and finding them grabbing their wires and harnesses on the ISS. I don't think they ever imagined in the 80s yeah. and 90s that we'd be able to have that access. So now we can like expose what they're doing in real time. And it's, I think that's the most interesting part yeah. of it. Um, hold on, someone just had a good question. Oh, they I said, where do the rockets go? So it's our belief, you know, I'll, I will say before we get yeah. into too much, like the, uh, um, like what are asteroids? What's going on with the moon? I will say I'm speculating on a lot of that. All but I do believe yeah. truly that we can prove that there's no motion or curvature and that's with math and science if we can get into the nitty-gritty of that but I just want to say like talking about where rockets go uh, just pure speculation but with that said we think they come out into the Atlantic Ocean and then go yeah. retrieve them um, there's, there's like a no-go zone you can't be anywhere near the launch or out in the water any boats or planes and we think that they just go retrieve them either that or they're flying out to one of these other earth puddles that uh we don't know about um who knows oh wild <laughs> but i don't believe that they're going yeah. up into outer space as they tell us yeah that's crazy yeah um okay so tell us about the math thing and then maybe we'll get <laughs> the, to uh, would you say the math that. okay so yeah the math yeah the so math well, like one of the big, like the hardest more. proof I like um, to go with is like the actual science and repeatable science. So you can go out and actually measure the earth. There's a formula. It's eight inches per mile squared. Um, and if you go out over a certain distance, you know, the earth is supposed to drop because it is allegedly curved. Uh, we take Chicago skyline as one of the most famous examples. It's about 60 miles. You can see it from about 60 to 80 miles away across Lake Michigan. And if you do the math and apply it, there should be so much curvature, you shouldn't even be able to see the top of the tallest building in the Chicago skyline. And on a clear day with the right conditions, you can see the entire skyline top to bottom. A weatherman once caught it, called it a mirage, was like, you're not supposed to be able to see this, so this must be a mirage. We actually had someone go out and charter a boat and live stream the whole thing all the way across the lake, proving it wasn't an optical illusion, that it was really there. So this yeah. type of experiment with the no curvature being detected over like a large body of water has been replicated over and over for the last six to seven years. And no one's ever been able to find that eight inches per mile squared, whether they're in a, you know, a high altitude balloon 30 miles high in an airplane uh, out at sea. It's just undetectable. So um, it's supposed to be there and no one's ever detected it in the history of in the history of time. So. So I live in Louisiana and we have Lake Pontchartrain and there's a 26 yes. mile bridge, I believe. Talk, talking so I this. A lot yeah, yeah. I've never gone to it, but yeah, you know about the, yeah, so the allegedly, stuff that they've done there. I don't know if this is where you were going, but I know that there's a picture famously that gets shared of that bridge and it almost looks like it's kind of curving over. And a lot of people were sharing that and saying, mm -hmm. oh, this is proof that the earth is curving. but it's actually kind of a comical one because if the earth was curving that drastically over just that 26 miles or whatever, the earth would be like the tiny, it would be like the size of North America. But um, I would just, I would just divert to Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's one of the most respected leading science voices. He says that you wouldn't be able to fathom seeing curvature at 60 miles high. So for us to think that we can see a bridge curve from the ground, 
would be just irrational. So mm -hmm. they claim that we can't see it from an airplane, from the Red Bull jump, from the yeah. Richard Branson space flight. If they see it up there, then that yeah. what, what's going on with that bridge is just an optical illusion like street lights down a highway. Yeah, and I think I've seen stuff where they did kind of like the math using that bridge too that you're talking about, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while exactly um, found, since but... I looked into that that bridge specifically, but it's really um, uh, easy if you just take a laser. Really, they're expensive, but if you get a high powered laser, you can take it over Lake Michigan or uh, even Lake Apopka in Central Florida and show that it can wow. you know go from point A to point B with no uh, hump of water in the middle. Um, yeah, I think it's like this is uh, my favorite one of all. Saying, yeah. Is like this water is going to find its level yeah. no matter what. Um, as soon as it gets still, so yeah. uh, bodies of water lay completely flat. And I, when you kind of like really drill down, it's kind of funny to think that the Earths have like a, a they are bulged the whole way around. When water, the natural physics of water, if we're talking about real science, you can't replicate a ball sticking or a water sticking to a ball. I can only replicate it in a repeatable experiment is resting, um, finding its level. Yeah. The only time like water ever kind of looks like that is like when you have right. like one drop sitting yeah. and it makes and like, dome, it kind of, of but I don't the very know. Top, much. It would create that like, bubble like right here, yeah. right before it spilled over and that like surface tension, that water droplets, yes, and yeah. waves yeah. obviously, but we're, I'm talking about like a large body, like a bathtub or a lake or an ocean, it's physically impossible for it to, uh, to bend or curve in any way. Yeah. So that you just said something that reminded me if, okay, because they always show us those tide schedules or they used to have them when I was a kid because I lived on the Puget Sound and they would be like the tide schedule and it was like a little booklet and it would tell you like when it's gonna be low tide, when it's gonna be high tide. And they tell you that has to do with the moon. So in a flat earth model, is there anything accounting for the tide? And so, what, how does that great work? Great question. You know, with know? a lot of things in our, in our universe, I think they're, they get become more of a mystery. We don't know what causes tides. I would say yeah. the popular theory is that it's something to do with the salt water. Because if you think about it, really, really large lakes don't just have waves. The moon doesn't move, um, you know, Lake Michigan. But it only moves the salt water. So we think it has something to do with the salt, uh, be living in an electric universe. Um, maybe the earth is breathing uh, at the very center. It may be contracting and expanding every day and that's what's causing the tides. We really don't, but we don't believe it's the moon. I think uh -huh. the moon is much more significant than they tell us. Like obviously it's connected to like female energy. We have uh, Luna, meaning lunacy. Crazy people come out on the full moon. There's so much going on with that, that I think it's more significant than just yeah. a random rock. I think the sun and moon are equal opposites. I think that's why they appear the same size and distance in the sky. Um, that there's some there's some energy there, but I don't believe that it's doing the tides, and I don't think most flat earthers would either. Yeah. So do you look at flat Earth from a a Christian perspective and the um, oh gosh, the I forgot the name of it. The um, everyone's gonna hate me. Yeah, the firmament and all of that. Is that how you look at it? Or are you I, just kind of more of a I really only look at it as like on the scientific side. And that only that's only because I really didn't, wasn't really raised in church much. Um, and I, I didn't like have that background to like resonate with me. But I will say, nothing has really made me more sure yeah. in a creator than learning about this model. Because to me, the one of the reasons they lie to us is they want us to think we're an insignificant speck in an endless universe, in a godless universe that's just a cosmic sneeze, when really we are intelligently designed with a designer, I believe, with a, with a purpose. And I think that makes us more powerful and more significant when we realize that. And I think part of this deception is to hide the creator. And that is this... this to me, it just opened my eyes to all of that and, and solidified that more than ever. So even not coming in from that angle, there's still a very big aspect to it. And uh, people will claim that there's over 50, I believe, Bible verses that reference like a stationary plane, not a sphere in any way. Yeah. 
that. And then there's also like a lot of the different stuff now, not biblical, but a lot of the different stuff where they talk about like for aeronautics and things, they'll be like assuming a flat stationary oh, yeah. earth and people use that a lot. Like, like yeah, some of the, those accounts that share all the, they're like, look at this, look at that, you know, what, where they're saying like yeah. this math assumes a flat stationary earth. Like why would it say if they really thought the earth moved yes, and everything? I really Do you like know anything about that? Or? I think there's dozens now. There's um, FAA, CIA, NASA, Army documents, and they all, <laughs> talk about that. I mean, you have to train properly and safely, right? We're not going to put our best and brightest in danger. So what are we going to tell them to do? Are we going to tell them yeah. to, to, to turn the plane as if it's the, the ground spinning underneath them? No, they're not. So honestly, pilots in that stuff is one of my favorite angles. I've actually got some videos that I confront pilots and ask them about it after my flight. And it, it goes really well, because a lot of times if you really get them to think about it, they go, huh, I've never thought about that. I really just fly the plane. But they fly the plane flat yeah. and level in the air over a plane. Go figure. But um, they're not accounting for any supposed yeah. eight inches per mile squared either. And some of them, you get them to think about that. And it's a, it's a pretty good conversation. Yeah, I have um, a pilot that I follow on here that I think started doing TikTok. And I feel like he talks about flat earth oh, and stuff. Yeah. It would have been good to have him on or like connect you guys that conversation because that would have been fun. Um, I don't know because like I don't have TikTok exactly mm -hmm. like what he says about it. Um, or it's like from his pilot perspective, yeah. but it would be interesting. There's a really outspoken pilot on um, Facebook. His name's Pilot LX. Um, I forget that he was in a documentary uh -huh. as well. I can't think of the name, but uh, there was a documentary with like uh, army people, like snipers, Navy. Um, oh, we got a oh, pilot right now. It says. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pilots are great someone. to talk to about it. I actually uh, talked to with a police officer who was also a part-time pilot. And uh, we had a nice debate. He was not in agreement, but we had a good conversation about it. Nice. Um, Oh gosh, what was I going to ask you? We talked about the pilots. That was we, I, I, I did totally mention like forgot. military guys. There's, there's sniper. Um, there's yeah. experts that have done like long range shooting. Um, the the rail gun is another interesting one. It shoots like, I think a hundred miles in a straight line, and it's you know perfectly over the, the flat and level water that it's shooting over, and it wouldn't be able to shoot as a, you know, as a curved trajectory. There's a lot of things like uh, periscopes, um, lighthouses. Um, oh, that's yeah. The they the can see way too far. If you do, yeah. if you take the math out, any lighthouse or even the Statue of Liberty, it's we can just plain see too far. Um, a great uh, one of the frequently asked yeah. questions is how come we can't see Europe from America if the Earth is flat? And it's a great question. The answer is is there's so much atmospheric distortion like water droplets in the air that eventually your view is going to be distorted by that but also we can only see about three miles with the mm -hmm. naked eye um even if you use a yeah. telescope or a camera or increase your elevation you're still going to lose your distance you can't just flat see all the way to antarctica um, yeah that makes sense um somebody said the salt flats alone prove the earth is flat yeah, so do you I, know I about where that that's at. maybe like utah or somewhere but it's like a massive body of water and it freezes over in the winter and it freezes over completely flat it's not this big curved bulge you can see the reflection of the clouds and stuff off of it like a perfectly still lake um some of those things are just very telling you know they tell us that we are spinning at millions of miles per hour in three or four different directions and they want you to say, well, that's what my senses tell me we're and I'm grounded. Yeah. But scientism will tell me I'm spinning in all these directions. You know, the earth's curved, but you can't see it. We're spinning, but you can't feel it. Just trust science, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was going to ask you that I forgot. Okay, because I like to think about this. How do you think and why maybe so I, I guess like if you weren't religious i see it from a religious perspective or maybe you do but how do they deceive people so many people these lies that deceive humanity what how do you think that they accomplish accomplish that 
when it's something this big? Like, what are your thoughts or, or how do you reckon with that? I guess. That's, I, really, that's I, a really I, tough one because it boggles my mind too at times. I think because the conspiracy is so yeah. old for one, like hundreds of years. And I also yeah. think because it's very hard to go check for yourself, you know, we have to be an astronaut apparently yeah. to go up high enough. We just got the ability to do like high altitude balloons with the GoPro. You know, we still don't have the ability to get to Antarctica easily and see if any of this is accurate. This is just like history. So yeah. they just told people the way it was. And I think that the king, you know, the, the appeal to authority, you have the scientists, the priests, the Jesuit priests who created the Big Bang. These, uh, these same satanic yeah. pedophiles that run our world, if you trace them all back, those same people gave us the Big Bang, the dinosaurs, the globe, gravity, yeah. all of it. And I think that, in my opinion, they did it to take us away from God and to keep us from finding any of the other puddles. Because I tell people, they go, well, why would yeah. they lie? And I go, well, have you, have you tried to go find the other continents? And they go, what continents? Exactly. They've closed off the entire idea that these worlds could exist by making it a ball. You think, well, if I go around in a circle, I'll just end back up at the same place. There's no reason to go. And the only way out is through space, and I have to be an astronaut specially selected by my own government. Good luck. So I think that's the way they were able to keep it a secret. Yeah. But like I said, our technology and optics have outgrown their lies. So I think the internet and things have made us catch on. Yeah, that's definitely true. Somebody said what I kind of think about it is that, you know, and it, it's similar to what you think, but basically it's like a spiritual force. Um, I think what, when I think of all these conspiracies, I'm like, well, who would be the greatest conspirator? Obviously the devil, Satan, is the greatest conspirator against humanity. And so it makes sense, like a, a deception, our minds are actually so easy to manipulate that a deception you know, put in our minds, like, first of all, like you said, if they just tell us the earth is a certain shape, we just grow up believing that it could take us decades before we even right. like ever start to question it. Um, also, you know, like the appeal to authority and just the, the like way that they frame stuff, you see this in the medical industry all the time. It's like, why do these top doctors, how are they all kind of covering for this? Or how are they not understanding, you know, when it comes to like the V products and injury or something like that. It's just the deception is so like enrooted in the system, asking the wrong questions. Like people almost know right. instinctually, like don't ask that, don't question that, don't, you know, it was like all kinds of different things like, oh, you're crazy if you question this or whatever. But I really think that it's like a de demonic yeah. force in my opinion that kind of drives not necessarily like yeah, a certain I tend person, to, like, to agree with you, and I think but... you're right about that like ingrained factor. Like I didn't think about this one time until I was 26 or something. When I meet people, they'll say, "Oh wow, yeah, I've never even like thought about this until the last couple of years." And it's like the pilots, you know, you just get up and go to work every day. The Earth is a globe as much as the sky is blue. You would never, or water is wet. Like it's such a given in your mind that we never think otherwise. So that's the, I think that's one of the, the yeah. easiest ways. And you just, if you close off Antarctica and create NASA, they took our, our mind from like the hidden area and pointed it right up to space. And we're like, look up here, aliens, 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 Star Trek, Star Wars, Independence Day. I mean, we have just been hammered with that stuff. And it's like, wait a minute, if they're doing all this, look over here, what's over here, you know? Yeah. So what made you question the shape of the earth initially? What was the first thing that you were uh, like, uh, well, something's not I right. was already into government corruption, conspiracies. I was already, you know, a libertarian that knew about 9-11 and all these other things. But I had people that I trusted and respected their judgment posting about it. And I was like, they're crazy. I like called them nuts. I was like, this is going to make us look bad. It's going to what everybody says, right? It's a yeah. psyop. It's going to destroy all the credibility we've gained. But I'm like, I trust yeah. her. Why is she posting this? So I was like, I'm going to watch it. So I watched it and it was Eric Dubay's 200 proofs. Earth is not a spinning ball. And I, it didn't take me long because when you kind of just, you just have to verify the claims made, you know, I, I, I said, okay, what do they tell us about the globe? I went and looked, I was like, Oh my God, that's what they tell us. 
And then I went and looked at the flat earth claims and I was like, oh my God, this is verifiable. Like this is, this is really, this is crazy. And then I just, the no photographs of earth from space and the um, repeatable experiments of like seeing things like lighthouses and uh, the Statue of Liberty, the Chicago skyline. That was probably what sent me down the rabbit hole. And then everything else, once you find NASA, you're like, wow, they're lying about pretty much everything they do, which does not make the earth flat. Let me be clear. Uh, but the other evidence did in my opinion yeah so that's what i was going to bring up earlier when we were talking asteroids do you remember this past summer there was like supposedly an asteroid and they were like we're hitting it with a rocket yeah, to like knock it that. out of the way or something like it, yeah they, they didn't say it was coming towards earth i think they were just practicing for next time in case it was supposedly or whatever um and so they 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 were like, here we are. And the video, if you watch it, you're like, what am I seeing? And it just looks like it's zooming in on a rock and then it's over. And I remember people kept playing this and I was like, when are they going to actually show it hitting or whatever? And, <laughs> and then I realized that was a video of it supposedly hitting. I'm like, no, this nothing looked like anything happened here. This is so bizarre. And then they showed the NASA people like cheering and stuff. And I was like, do they show us this stuff to like break our minds further to where they're I like, don't believe can't anything now. <laughs> figure it out either. It's either that or they're just like straight up mocking us. Like, remember the car in space? Remember when Elon put the car yeah. in space? No, but I've I heard that later and I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, I didn't watch it when it happened, but I, people told me that. It was just, just like, incredibly, what? incredibly <laughs> fake. For one, when Elon did the car, there's a scene where it's, in space and there's a glitch and it cuts to the car back in the studio like a room so that was already <laughs> like what is that is it really out there but the, the best thing if you ever want to do some good bloopers go look up like the old nasa videos maybe i'll make like a reel of them but the ones from like the 80s and 90s they had uh, to work with what they had so like some of the camera tricks and graphics there's one where it looks like a spacecraft in space, and then some guy's head pops up in the screen, bigger than the space shuttle thing. Like, and then he, he looks over, and you see his glasses, the outline of his glasses and his hair, and he goes, oh, and then he ducks. And it's like literally a model spaceship in yeah. a room. And this guy just showed it. It's so embarrassing. Like, the things that they fooled us and our parents and our grandparents with is just like, you just take your head now. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't have, so like a lot of people probably, I don't have a good attention for detail when I watch something <laughs> like that. I might not even notice it. Um, but I do think about like, now it's a little bit different. Like, well, especially like my son, he's on the spectrum, but like he would notice anything. He'd be like redrawing right. it with all the, the things that were wrong, you know? And I, what, what are you drawing there? He'd be like, it's the mouse that was running on the spaceship. You didn't see that. And I'd be like, no, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of a, uh, you know, interesting, like different people's perspectives and stuff. But I think they played on that for a long time. People just didn't really have that type of like mindset or way that their brain worked. It's like everyone was just missing stuff and you couldn't replay yeah, it over and that, over. I think like, that's the key. Now, it's like now know? we can be like, wait, what was that? And you can go literally download the live feed, <laughs> zoom in, slow it down. Like, you know, there's some old, old bloopers yeah. from like the spacewalks too, where, you know, the, the helmet doesn't move. And then, like, it'll, like, he'll swivel over and look at the camera. And then you, like, wait a minute. They just told us, they like, there's just little things like that everywhere. Like, someone said the mouse, just like you mentioned. It's, it's wild. I actually yeah. um, confronted an astronaut about the bubbles in space one time uh, on stage during an event. Some people may have seen that video. His body language, just, it's just so telling. You know, he had nothing to say. And he's like, oh, well, and his hands are just, you know, doing one of these. And, um. He's just so nervous, and he tries to tell me it's flecks of paint coming off the space station. But it's, you know, it, yeah, we all think it's bubbles, Weird. and they're yeah. on the water. I don't think there's anyone at the space station either. Like, that's yeah. so bizarre to me. Um, and somebody, they said Elon actually just tweeted a picture of the car. So I'm going to go a little, you guys, like, I'm a huge conspiracy theorist. Don't be like me because, you know, this is illegal to have conspiracies, you're gonna be sued for $10 trillion, just like Alex Jones, if you come up with any of these ideas, but I do it anyway. Um, um, 
But I think, so when I, when I see Elon Musk, like I like Twitter, I like the freedom of speech, but the Bible always comes back to me when they're like, you know, the beast and the antichrist and he makes works of, uh, you know, fire in the sky and everything. And that's all I can think of whenever I think of Elon Musk. Like, yeah. and I'm not saying he's the antichrist or that is the beast system, but that, that's just all the things that I start to think about. I'm like, this is we have all the mechanisms now for us to be deceived. You know, it's not that people are going to look up into the sky and be like, oh, that person just threw a firebolt in there. It's like they're going to do rockets. They're going to do fake cars, you know, all around the moon. They're going to do all kind of things like that. And that's how, look how deceived we are as we and stare at our devices. And do you feel like so Elon is doing, it. maybe acting in all this way, like unknowing of what you just said? Like almost just like a useful, like a useful idiot? Or is he doing Oh, you think he's in the know? No. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I that's how I see it. I have pretty. I think I have pretty good um, discernment, but I think he's in the know. I actually don't trust Twitter, as y'all know. Um, I've yep. talked about this a couple of times. There's something very odd on Twitter that Instagram doesn't have. I was. On, I've been on Instagram for two years. I've been on Twitter for like four months. So let's say you go to my post that I posted, and um, you put a comment. It's going to show you, you know, you're not, I don't, I don't think your account's verified. So it's going to show you made a comment and it's going to say, you know, it'll say what time it is maybe today, but you know, in three days, it's going to say you made that comment three days ago. So that's kind of like likened to like a text message type of um, conversation. If somebody wanted to use that tweet against you, you know, I'm not saying right. that they would, but I'm just saying the government, whatever. You have to actually get more information like that's where those like the, the patriot act and stuff comes in where they would have to be like okay we need to verify things about him we need to verify more details about this text message i mean this um uh comment to make sure it was him all those things when you look at tweets tweets have a date stamp and a time stamp on every single tweet that's more like into like an email which emails are official records. You don't have to go and ask for more information or violate any laws to prove exactly when, you know, in real time, that person said that. Somebody else was telling me that they're working on some type of geolocation. And then that geolocation would be further oh, proof that you're wow. the person that made that statement and everything. So I worry when people really tweet like crazy stuff, I'm yeah. like, I, I wouldn't do that because um, ever know what they're going to start are using against you now we have the restrict act coming up which i don't i haven't looked into it too much I, I saw somebody today post that they deleted like a bunch of instagram posts and everything because of it coming up i'm like i don't think that's the right move personally like you have to take these things head on not like get scared right. and hang everyone out else out to dry um but that's kind of an interesting thing that we have going on there and then there was something else i was going to say about the restrict doc and oh yeah and then here's the the third piece of that is that they want everyone to get verified now and verified is actually a verification of your identity now twitter is currently not i guess necessarily asking yeah. for your government issued id but instagram is so yeah it's a, a little it creepy today. it sounds like, like this i really don't i don't i remember before he took over twitter i was you wonder about his upbringing just like bill yeah. gates did he just happen to happen upon PayPal and then SpaceX? Or is he, I don't know. And I don't like, I, you, you said it in the beginning, I like Twitter. I'm all for the fact that I can post about the V and all this stuff now, but what if he is starting some crazy new data mining like control system? And it's also, what's it making people flock to Twitter? The people who spread the truth, the people who are doing yeah. Speech. you're gonna hang yourself with your own free speech you know i mean out hang yourself out to dry not literally but you know what i'm saying like you have to still be careful and i see a lot of people tweeting have, all kind of stuff that they probably um, Twitter you know thing, if you like, go to like report someone one of the options literally says like you know bullying harassment nudity and then one of them is posting about 9 11 and uh, a particular school shooting which i won't even say out loud on here but it's no, crazy. Well, I like, didn't go know through that. the options really? to report someone yep. and just check all the drop downs and it literally has like posting about nine eleven and conspiracies. Yeah. Like. That's wild. But that's exactly what I'm saying. And you don't know, okay, like Dylan Mulvaney, like not to go off on like a big tangent here, but have put out like a video a while ago and they were like 
oh gosh, they were like, all of you anti-trans people or something. I hope you realize that in time, it, the government might not look at it so nicely for you to be saying these things. And I was like, oh Lord, you know what I mean? Because there are a lot of people saying stuff and you don't know what kind of laws they'll pass and if they're retroactive and you know, then they have all these tweets and timestamps where you were like seen as anti that. That's more what I'm talking about. Not that people right. are posting like violent stuff, but they're posting that I'm like, you don't know exactly where things are going to go and how far back they're going to go. Also, the guy who you just know what got I'm saying? Years, that makes or sense? potentially could get 10 years for the meme. I there saw was, that, but I think guys, there, was there was more but to at the it, same right? Time, like, Oh, there was more to it but like yeah. i think it started as like him doing it as a joke really scary like a precedent joke, yeah. for someone to get like what if they they can just say oh well we we interpreted that not as a joke and now you're going yeah. to jail for five years or ten years you know i think there was some type of texting involved like you had to text something and it was like it was maybe a joke but like people were actually they it was were, like texting yeah. to vote and maybe they actually had it well, yeah, yeah. Go I ahead. Also Oh, sorry. I was going to say something else I also think about is that a lot of times these stories come out to frighten us so that we don't do things. They're like 40% of people, we can just frighten them with like a, a story, you know, like I heard a lot of stuff like during the pandemic about PPE loans. They were like, oh, everyone that took PPE loans, be careful because they just uh, sued this yeah. person back for all the money or whatever. They can that story and then everyone's scared and stuff but does that really happen to people you know, yeah, you know I hear, so i always I like to look think at that the same thing there's plenty of stories like that that are straight up fear campaigns and nothing more yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens with that though because i i did see what you're talking about but i didn't know anything right. about it Oops. when it actually happened um oh also before i forget too um there's a new film coming out if anyone's interested on this topic it's called Level With Me. It's the third installment of Level, the film. It comes out in two weeks, um, April 22nd on Earth Day. Yeah. And I've got a little small part in there. I'll be talking about the ISS and the Challenger uh, explosion, um, which, by the way, if people don't know, we think that was one of the early false flags where they faked people's deaths. And that Challenger crew is actually still alive, some of them teaching at universities with the same name. I've seen the photos where they show like them then and them now. So how do you think that they can convince I think those they people to do that? Them, obviously. Them. And I think they also, when they had the conversation in 1986, like I said, there was no conversation of what are we going to do when the internet's created and people can look us up and at our homes and our jobs. Okay. They're like, here's a payday and then I just go about your business. Days, you know, <laughs> people get a much more probably secretive deal. Now it's or back then they were like, Oh yeah, yeah you'll be fine. We'll just, you can go work at a university, but now, it is weird how they're still out in the public because even though all this has come out, like you can Google some of them, just Google them regularly and all the conspiracy stuff will come up. And I'm yeah. like, that's crazy, but, but it's going to be covered in this film like no other in two weeks. And he's really going to crack it wide open. So you, I think, oh, check it out. I'm so excited. Levelwithmefilm.com. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure the address. Oh, gotcha nice um yeah i think there's a lot of stuff like that that happens um one thing one of the early things that woke me up this probably other people probably wouldn't understand this but it's probably four four years ago maybe five years ago there was all these news articles coming out scaring people from like natural doctors or natural doctors speaking out and so there was like all these news articles that were like six natural oh, doctors have died like mysteriously yeah, but when I started looking them up, because y'all know if anyone has practiced medicine, first of all, if your name is going to be attached to an NPI number, it's going to be attached to, you know, your medical board, all kind of stuff. So when I start looking the people up, I'm like, I don't see any website. I don't see any MPI numbers popping up. You know, those mm -hmm. are usually like the second or third thing under your name. So that was like, that was the first, first time I thought about fake news. And I was like, do they kill fake people? to yeah. scare us you know what i mean like they come up with stories these people might have never been real they're totally fake stories but now you're like oh my gosh like i can't right. speak out about natural medicine like look what's happening or i 
interact with those natural medicine doctors. This is so scary, yeah. you know. And yeah, no, I totally agree. It. I mean, you, you make me think of uh, Operation Northwoods, which is one I bring up to people. If anyone has trouble wrapping their heads around them fake killing people, in 1954, they presented JFK, yeah. the chief of staff or CIA, whoever was like, we need to invade Cuba and we need a reason so we can either blow yeah. up airplanes with people or without people. We can make a bomb go off in Miami. We can kill people or not kill people. And like, so they were proposing like faking American deaths to justify an agenda. That, What's that? that I, I think it was 1964. What year was it? Sorry. Um, it was called Operation Northwoods. Okay. Yeah. And they, they were thinking about that in the 60s. Oh. Now JFK shot it down and it's like, what have they done since then, you know? Now I will say, I, I'm good friends with Aaron Elizabeth who reported on a lot of those doctor deaths. And I can tell you that the majority of them were legit because she knew quite a few of those people and she reported on it closely. But your, your point still stands that a lot of times they'll put stuff out and yeah. you're right, the majority of people will take the fear and that's all that they needed to do. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, it's wild. I'll have to look into that Operation Northwood. That's so interesting. Um, so before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you though about what is We Are Change and what do you do? Because I've never really understood. I follow uh, you and then there's Luke, right? Like he's We Are Change too. Like what is your organization? And, yeah, so We Are um, Change is basically what inspired me to get involved with activism. Um, I, will, I fell into the rabbit hole in 2012 and I was like, one of the big things is, you know, the media lies so much. That's why we're all so deceived on all these topics. So I'm like, wow, I wish people would do their own media found we are change luke was out confronting people like henry kissinger and clinton bush out on the streets and putting the microphone in their face and it was a 9 11 truth group that's what it started as um and i basically was like oh i'll do the we are change orlando chapter took that over here and um it was it's been a wrap that's sort of just the umbrella i've worked under uh it's a decentralized group so you any chapter can do whatever they want really um but it's just journalists and activists yeah. trying to highlight these topics they don't want us to know about. We Anything from the Federal Reserve to GMOs and the V word, um, anti-war, you know, all yeah. that mostly like libertarian, anarchist minded people. That's really what it is. And then it just evolved into this like alternative media activists, you know, like group. There's not a lot of chapters around the world anymore that are super active. Uh, there's a guy out in Melbourne, Australia, Luke, myself, maybe a handful of others, but um, that's really it. And I will say like, I, I don't wanna let like Flat Earth represent We Are Change too much. Cause I know there's plenty of people, this is a very controversial topic. This is like, this is me and my views. I don't wanna, you know, people go bark into Luke sometimes. Like, are you up with this Flat Earth thing? It's like, hey man, people can do what they want. It's not like it's a, you know, controlling. It's a very decentralized organization, so. People do that too me too about the libertarian party and when i talk yeah. about space being fake the moon landing being fake i don't i talk about flat earth mm -hmm. but i always say i'm 50 50 flat round but for like for a while i was 75 percent. now I'm probably, maybe i might move back to 50 50 but i always like to talk about the moon landing and people will dm me or say the exact same thing hey this isn't helpful for the movement and i'm like but I don't know what to tell you because this is what I actually think. And the truth will come out. Do you want to be the last person, you know, jumping on the truth bandwagon? Or do you want to be the first person? And people are like, hey, I remember um, Justin used to talk about that before we all knew it. Now I actually see him as even more credible than ever yeah, and very point. brave. You know and what I, I'm you saying? Know, we so go back, you know, what's our motto in this community? If you want to be a part of it or not and claim it, I do. I'm proud of it. And I, we, our motto is question everything. And I can't ignore the most like controversial, potentially the biggest lie of all. So like you said, let's throw all the cards out on the table. Let's discuss it. The truth will come to light. Whichever one's true, I'm sure will show itself. Um, but we shouldn't like hide from a topic or let our cognitive dissonance show again that we maybe had with other topics. I've gotten the phone call from, hey, I protested the GMOs. I can't believe you're a 9-11 truther. Hey, I protested 9-11. I can't believe you think that shooting was fake. Hey, that shit was fake. I can't believe you're a flat earther. So it's gonna, everything's gonna come can be divisive yeah. if if it's a controversial topic. No. Oh, for sure. Um, 
I want to ask you really quick. I don't know if you have any. So you if are I had libertarian. To, if I had to check a box. Yes, you, that's the one I'd pick. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about RFK Jr. running? I am very excited about. It. I know a lot of people have a lot of reservations there. Um, <clears throat> I think we need more info on some of his different policies, obviously, because he doesn't always talk about economics or um, the gun the gun stuff. There's been some tweets that popped up, but they're from 2018. I'm like, he might think differently now. What, like are, what are your thoughts? Like, um, um, I've, I feel really good yeah. about him, I will say. And for a couple of reasons. One, I think he understands the, the levels of the corruption and like the deep state, if you will, more than most people, because his father and his uncle were killed by the CIA. He admits that. Like, big, big, big deal there. Um, he thought, like, my main topics yeah. in, in activism have been, like, Monsanto, 5G, the V word. Um, that's what yeah. he has been, like, suing and educating on for the last five or six years. So, like, he checked a lot of boxes for I me. But, right, the, the gun thing there's... does concern me. Mm -hmm. But I think that he understands now that the system is going to be using the climate agenda and the gun thing to take our rights away. I really don't believe he's going to be on board yeah. with that, but you can definitely find some old tweets and some old work of his. You're like, whoa, he's, he believes in the carbon thing and he believes yeah. in taking the guns away. But I think we're safer now with the 2023 RFK for sure. Yeah, I actually shared because a lot of people and I almost like I get like psyopy when too many people are flying at me with look at this tweet from 2018. He pushes carbon credits. I'm like, what are you got? Like, where did you guys come from out of the woodwork? You know what I mean? Throw shade on this guy because I actually found an article from the defender just the other day because people are saying that to me and they're like, he's further, he's, he supports the green new deal and stuff. And I'm like, well, look at this article from the defender. He didn't write it himself, but that's his publication. He retweeted it. And so this is basically probably what he thinks. And he talks all about how, you know, they're going to take people's rights away with the climate agenda, you know, or the writer of the article does, but that's literally his publication. So I'm like, and he talks about he is an environmentalist, but a lot of the things that they're doing, he's like, these aren't even environmental. So I'm worried that he'll get character assassinated on that climate change uh, topic big time. And then obviously the guns, like if he doesn't come out with some good um, messaging about that. But I agree. I don't think I feel like everyone woke up in 2020 and I'm pretty sure like I would bet like he probably yeah, woke up to true. the gun rights and I think so know, and I think we read the same article like I literally did some digging and I'm like he is not expressing that he's on board with it like he fights he's not going to ever be down no. with like a 5g smart city which is part of the climate agenda he's never going to yeah. be down with spraying the to block the sun like he fights against yeah. things. so clearly he <laughs> wants to like stop the pollution stop the pesticides like a real yeah. environmentalist actually just wants to clean up the earth without the help of the United Nations. Like, and I think also, you know, my view is he probably hasn't said what we just said because it will alienate the entire left vote that he may still have clinging on. Maybe he's just going to play it real careful and be like, yeah, we do need to work on the climate, just regenerative farming and this not, you know, 5G smart cities. Yeah. And I, I mean, yes, that's kind of exactly what the article talked about. And then people had also thrown out he's for socialism. And I'm like, they sent me some video, which was like older. It was an interview. And I'm like, three minutes in, he's saying that he the problems with big oil, the big oil industry is literally, he says they get too many subs, uh, subsidies that are like cropping up the industry. And he's like, that's not the free market. And I'm like, if he was really a socialist and he really was like, it was all about carbon credits and stuff, he wouldn't say like, we can't prop up this unsustaining industry. And that's really like the way that he looks at it. Um, I don't, I've never seen him say anything about like what everyday people should do. Um, everything is all about controlling like the industries a little bit better, which I, okay, as a libertarian, I'm like, yes, like if I was an anarchist, I would love to have no laws right. at all. But as a libertarian, we're going to have laws. It is. We might as well have laws to protect the people, the individuals from these big, massive industries. So to ask them not to go next door to your house 
and dump a bunch of pollution. Yeah. I'm like, that's not that. Yeah, I think we're on the same system. page. Like I, you hear regulation and you're like, oh, I don't know about that. But I, don't, I, and I hate to say I trust <laughs> the guy, but I do kind of trust his judgment on like properly reining in something like the FDA and the Federal Reserve. I really do. Um, he also is yeah. really like close with Del Big Tree, who's very away. They, they, I don't know, just yeah. the people around them all alluded to knowing quite a bit, like much better options yeah. this time around, it seems. I, yeah, I like Del Big Tree a lot. I definitely like RFK. I think that if there was somebody that has a chance that is not an outsider, you know, because they kind of got mm -hmm. us with like Trump's an outsider and everything <clears throat> that doesn't uh, pretend to be an outsider. But like you said, he he has a lot of reasons why he wouldn't be like a deep stater. You know, it's like they killed his dad and his uncle. And even he tweeted yeah. about the CIA doing it like some awesome books. I don't know if you've read Dr. Mary's Monkey um, or ever heard of it. So um oh, I, well you probably know all about you know like you probably watched like the lee Har uh what's it called yes what was it fk oliver stone you know uh, yeah, yeah so uh you know obviously and if you've read about this and stuff it all all that happened in new orleans so in new orleans in the 60s they were also doing supposedly underground research to come up with a cancer causing virus to kill Fidel Castro that was what they were working on Lee Harvey Oswald was here in New Orleans I actually don't live in New Orleans but he was here in Louisiana in New Orleans um working on this with another team there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on one of the the doctors working on it ended up getting murdered she had like her whole arm burnt off um, it was like, biz, you know, bizarre stuff, but Lee Harvey Oswald was there and there was a woman who was a lab assistant. She was an undergraduate college student, wanted to go to medical school. And, um, they had her working on supposedly these cancer causing viruses. She was like working with Lee Harvey Oswald too, had an affair with him. And so she also has a second book called Me and Lee. That's all about the six months basically leading up to the assassination. So that was very interesting uh, for me to read. But then for RFK later to talk about, you know, he's like, literally confirms, like, even just on Twitter, that he's like, after the CIA murdered my uncle, you know, um, I'm like, that's wild. Like, he he will say anything. He also did an interview with Megyn Kelly, where he talked about a hidden city in the Blue Ridge Mountains that no. they wanted to bring them to. Have you ever heard about Oh, you got to watch this Megyn Ke Kelly interview because he's like, yeah, there's an underground city in the Blue Ridge Mountains where after was it, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, they wanted to bring their family there. And he's like, my uncle or my dad or whatever was like, no, you don't hide. Like you are a public servant. Like you just go about your day and you help everyone to feel comfortable about what's going on. And I was like, what? So I tried to look it up. I'm like, no one... <laughs> There's nothing online about that, this. So I'm just like, what? Yeah, like, never, he will just say that, any. You're right. I'm going to find a clip and send it. I'll, I'll screen I'll, I'll screen record it or whatever because I'll find it because it's a two parter. It's yeah, like a it's, four hour long. It's just like when interview. I look at like Trump, DeSantis, Kennedy, I see Trump had his chance and showed us he either doesn't understand the depths of the corruption or wasn't willing or able to stop it hasn't showed us yet yeah. he's been a great governor but i he's going to show his true colors if he runs we're going to find out if he's going to be controlled or not real quick by his actions yeah but then kennedy i feel like has already proved he's willing to stick his neck out there for like if you come out that much against like vaccines and chemtrails and these super controversial topics and are still able to run on the kennedy name like that's that's crazy if he's able to even like yeah have a chance you know he wasn't on okay he talks about mainstream media wouldn't have him on for the last like 20 years or so or 12 years something like that because of he talks about the v products he got you know censored first amendment rights just as bad or worse than any of us like he got taken off of instagram before even that children's health defense stuff like they weren't able to advertise on facebook like they were some of the first ones to get their ads taken away because of you know the 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 hesitancy and everything like i <clears throat> i really think that you know he's done so much 
um, for the people. I mean, you never really know <clears throat> exactly what can happen, but I just don't see, you know, he's the only one that toured around all through 2020. He actually came to my state just to talk on behalf of children and everything to yeah. not mandate the B products. I also happen so. to know some people who work for CHD. I've got a mutual friend that knows him and like, I'm not hearing bad things like at all from, from any angle. And some of these people are so secretive and hard to get to. It makes me just lose hope and ever. But now that I like, you know, when you, when you have a closer connection to someone, you're like, okay, let's, let's try this out. Cause now if they mess up, I can really try to hold some feet to the fire. But, and this is coming from somebody who's written in Ron Paul, the last like three, two or three presidential elections. Like I don't believe in picking Democrat or Republican. I don't believe yeah. in like the two party system. I don't believe in voting, but like some, like I may vote for RFK if he does do this, you know? Oh, so this is wild. And actually I'm going to, I want to say one, one more thing, back it up is that, our, okay, our, okay, I like to think that Big Pharma and stuff won't even try to give him campaign money, but I also would really like to see him, if so, actively decline it. The problem to me with DeSantis and um, Trump is like, we know they both take Big Pharma money. Like, they both took Big Pharma money. I found some, you know, it's just like the Pfizer pack, whatever. A lot of people say that, oh, that, that's from the employees, but they have a board of directors and everything. They gave money to... DeSantis's group, they gave money to, you know, basically mm -hmm. like everyone you can think of. Um, one company, um, one company's pack, but they all take money from, you know, big pharma, big oil, big whatever, you know. So I would like to see RFK either, you know, hopefully they, those companies don't even offer him any and he's going to be a lot more crowdfunded or if they do that he's very transparent about declining the money to me that would be the biggest thing that's actually why I kind of like tried to hang on to the libertarian thing for so long even though all the libertarians hate me um because I was like you guys oh my, I gotta unplug my phone I feel like it's about to overheat this always happens to me um we're actually the last party that's not you know uh infiltrated with big industry money like that actually is a thing that people could yeah. like us better for you know see the duopoly because it's like it's the duopoly because they're both getting the same money like they cash their paycheck from the same person for their campaigns so that was actually a strength of the libertarian party to me but now i'm thinking like rfk actually has that and so this leads me into the crazy thing if RFK RFK looks like he has a chance of going to the Democratic primaries. I live in a closed state. And even before that, I might actually change my voter de uh, registration to Democrat just so I can vote for him um, in the primaries. And um, so I can try to volunteer for his campaign because I really do believe in him as a candidate, you yeah. know, more than anybody uh, else that I've ever I'm kind of with you. Um, I was like, I was ready to tell people just, I've been telling people just opt out, vote locally, but opt out of the, the, the federal system. But I don't know. It's going to, like yeah. some people say, it's going to run either way. And even my buddy here saying is like a, a vote, you know, is like casting a spell. It's consenting to your master. It's, and that's been my thing is like, no matter who I voted for, like they're going to drop agree. bombs on like brown children in the Middle East, no matter what I do. I can't, I can't write, I yeah. can't check that box. But like, I really think that RFK would rein that in. That's why like yeah. Ron Paul um, and RFK are probably the only politicians I can say I kind of trust. Um, I take yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, Ron Paul, of course. Ron Paul's amazing too. Um, I will on. This happens to me all the time, and I don't know why. Yeah, my, my, starts my to overheat. charging and running something <laughs> like this, it, it tends to do that too. Yeah, so then it'll say temperature bad and it'll just shut off, but. Um, yeah, I think, okay, so I agree with you. I tend to be one of those opt out type of people. I don't know if you know this about me. I actually worked in medicine for six years. I was a physician assistant. Um, you know, what happened to my son? He, I believe was injured by the V products. He has basically, you know, autism. Um, although he's doing so much better now because we stopped getting any of those, you know, I moved to farm. Actually, people don't know this either. I shared something about it, but I think the EMFs are really, really huge um, for children who are on the spectrum or ADHD, things like that. It's like, so we moved 
out to the country. There's like no EMFs here oh, and he's doing so much better. Um, yeah, it's cr crazy. We've actually, we lived in apartments. We lived like house apartment, um, country. He did better in the country. Then we had to go back to a townhouse. It was very hard on him. And then we came back to the country and this is even more country. And he's like doing the best he ever has. Um, but also he has not V products in three years now. Um, but because of that, and then 2020, I started waking up to that. Robert F. Kennedy was actually part of that for me. And um, <clears throat> then they came out with the mRNA. And I was working in the hospital. And I was like, you know, they were trying to push it on people. Not that they were going to push it on me, but I started to feel like I can't can't just live this lie anymore. You know what I'm saying? When I'm like, you hurt my son. Now, now you're trying to hurt all my patients. You're trying to hurt, you know, not that the hospital administered it to sick people. I worked at ICU, but I'm like the whole culture of the medicine. I'm like, I just can't, I, I need to be able to say the truth about what I think about this. So I actually left medicine in 2021 in April. And so I've been out of it for two years now, but so I'm, yeah. a, I'm an opt outer something like voting i'm like okay with it because i feel like like you said i mean it's gonna happen anyways and everything gotta try to pick the the lesser of the evils um also i'm just that's how i see it i'm like i have to try, or to try to to work on the people that we have yeah. and try to get them to do different things like i've also just type of like work. really enjoyed kind of infiltrating things lately like we infiltrated these council meetings and we're just taking over the public comment period hammering our mayor yeah. with facts about the V and bringing the V injured in there to speak. And like, I saw how effective that was. And I'm like, well, if I can, like, I made that guy hate, me. he was calling people like, can we, we got to get this guy to stop coming in here. And like, well, <laughs> and I didn't even vote. vote I so didn't. Like, <laughs> right. You gotta let me talk, right? Exactly. So it's yeah. just like, when you realize, okay, I can actually get to this guy, I can make them feel the pressure maybe I will vote against him or, or for him and then come in there and just raise hell again. I mean, it, it does work on a local level. I've kind of yeah. seen it now. We've got our own, we've got a mom that was coming to the, the meeting, school board meetings, fighting the mask mandates and just a regular mom. And because of yeah. those fights now, she is like a school board member. Like we actually, nice. one of That's us awesome. up there. Yeah. And you know, now if something crazy goes down, I can just, maybe message her and say, hey, we got something we need to look into. Like, so on a local level, I have way more faith yeah. in politics like that. You know, I've got a connection in DeSantis's office yeah. now. So like when something happens, I have a direct line of communication. So I am going to get a little more involved than I've been. It used to just be protesting and, you know, educating people and telling yeah. the public to opt out. I've gotten a little more involved in the local politics game now. Yeah. And I like to do the same thing. I like to go down to the Capitol. Last year, I think I went two or three times. This year, I am hoping to go more often. I like to follow local bills. Um, for me, it's anything education and anything that's, you know, obviously to do with like health or the B products or mandates or anything like that. Um, but, you know, go down, give, you can get public commentary or at least fill out a card to say, hey, please approve this. Please don't. Um, when I first started, I was just writing emails and I'm like, my local senator, you know, here in my state never seemed to notice, like they were just going to a spam or something. So I started doing that. I also here in Louisiana and you probably have one in Florida, we have a, a local health freedom, Louisiana, and I like to always like support them and go down when they do the actions and stuff. So, um, I think the citizen lobbying thing is huge and something yeah, that I think we I need to focus that on for actually sure. on Instagram. Um, Public pressure can do almost anything. You know, people will say, you know, and it's an, also an unpopular opinion, like riots work. I mean, I don't necessarily own it, but like when people show up outside of a building and are like, we're not going to take it anymore. They start picking up the phone and they go, how are we going to, we got to get them out of here. But like when everyone just sits back yeah. and just hopes that who they voted for will do something about it, it's never going to work. Someone just asked about, you know, get DeSantis to actually pass constitutional carry. I got to remind you, DeSantis doesn't write legislation. DeSantis would have signed a full-blown constitutional carry, but we have people in the legislature that are still rhinos, still sellouts, 
that will block that stuff. So if you guys want stuff like that done, you got to go in and find those legislators that blocked it from getting to your governor. Um, it's just one of the most the best things you can do and make them feel the pressure and they'll vote differently. Yeah, I, um, what was I gonna say? Sorry, I keep probably losing my I train of thought, I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Something to do with the citizen lobbying is what I was thinking about. Somebody said, did you get the same to, okay, forget politics, maybe it was somebody's question. We broke God's laws, Jesus paid the fine, so loving. I don't remember. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, there's a lot that we can do locally um, <clears throat> on our own or, oh, that's what uh, it's to do with, with protests and stuff. I'm not, to me, I'm not going to a protest. Like, I'm just not. It, like, other people can go. I'm just not going to go. I, I Like, especially after January 6th and stuff, I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm all set. But I want people to remember too, because there's a lot of people who are just like screaming, like civil war is the only thing that will fix this. And I'm like, did you try when they handed you like that piece of paper that was like, hey, tell us all your symptoms that you have um, so we can decide if you have the CV virus, you know, like, um, and then contact trace you or whatever. Did you try saying no? Like, did you actually push back when they said, hey, can you put on a mask? Did you say no? When they said, hey, um, why don't you do a test to do X, Y, Z? Did you, did you say no? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, if you didn't do those little things, like, please don't tell me you think you're brave enough for civil war and start talking in all sorts of crazy directions. I'm like, you have to, we, it never has to come to that. If you just right. grow a pair or, or whatever, and like do those up front and just say, Hey, I'm not going to do that, you know, and then tell your friends to do this. Yeah. Same thing. You know what I'm it's saying? The greatest like, form of exam. protest is voting with dollars in your actions. Like yeah. you say best, just go out and yeah. do the thing. You don't like I try to tell people too, because I've done a lot yeah. of organizing and protesting, but it's there's a it's a small piece of the puzzle. Like it's just a time and a place and a yeah. strategic action that you're rallying around. Maybe you're getting press coverage, maybe you're trying to make the mayor's life a living hell that week. But at the end of the day, you gotta just like stop not buying their products like if you don't want uh walmart to exist you don't buy their stuff or starbucks or whoever if you don't want um a politician or cnn to exist don't watch their network don't even watch it for the oh my gosh they're lying they're so hypocritical you're still giving them ratings so just completely tune it out and then one day they wake yeah. up and go man there's no one watching even the people that hate us aren't watching anymore we got to close the doors and then, then you go wow cnn is gone because we're not buying what they're selling. And I feel like that's, that's. They did happen to, didn't they try to do yeah, CNN plus I, I or did. something? And like, no one, oh, no one wanted. Great example. <laughs> Party. Yeah, it's wild. I think there's a lot of that happening with mainstream media, with all kind of stuff now, like everything is going to like smaller creator. I don't personally, I don't watch anything mainstream really anymore and not even really really big podcasts it's like almost all smaller podcasts smaller creators smaller yeah, I'm um in the same way stuff, if it's, so. at this point it's like if it's a really really popular whether it's the thing on the shelf in the grocery store or the podcast you're like it's probably not the one for me i, I want the little grandma i want the grandma brand with the organic yeah. label <laughs> you know like, it's <laughs> the way it is really <laughs> great I was gonna tell you, ask you, do you monetize on Instagram? Cause like I had started monetizing and it's like, it uh, it seems like it always hurts, like it like shadow bans me or something. So then today I'm done with this. And so I turned it off and I'm like, I feel like, is it gonna be better now? Like, I don't understand why they do that, but I wanted to ask yeah, other people that I, I don't have any um, feedback on that. I've never monetized. I remember back when YouTube was taking away the monetization option for all the people who talked about these topics. I, I saw that day as like, they're never yeah. gonna let me make money with these topics on the platform. So yeah. I never, I haven't tried. Yeah, on Instagram, it's like, I was monetizing and then I was like, all my reels are getting, you know, like no views, all this stuff. So I took it off. Everything went better for a while. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna turn it back on. And then instantly I got hit with like two violations. One of them said I was nude in my live stream. <laughs> I was like, what? 
<laughs> Sorry, you guys. It's Easter. But then all it showed was like a picture of me holding a can up, like taking a drink like this. And I was like, what the heck? You know? So anyway, I, I just turned it off. And no. so I'm like, hmm, I'm interested. Oh. Yeah. But that might just be because he, he has a big audience too. He, Joe was saying I had more people in this live stream than normal, but that might know, just but be It's, your it's so also, frustrating but, to have, well, you know, tens of thousands of people that would probably tune in and they're probably only notifying like 10% yeah. of our audience. Yeah, there's definitely something like that that goes on. Um, somebody <laughs> said you probably had a Bud Light can. Of That's pretty funny. <laughs> no. But this was really fun. Let's wrap it up before it actually okay. like shuts it off like it usually does to me. Um, thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate this. This was super fun. I am going to go ahead and post this to my page and tag you, and I'm going to post it to YouTube also. Um, okay. So everyone can check out the replay. This was a great conversation. We will have to do it again soon. Yes. And I definitely want to check that out your and movie I just want to show a couple of books about. I forgot to mention. If anyone wants to learn more about this map, um, you can check out The Navigator Who Crossed the Ice Walls. You can find it on Amazon, or if you don't want to support Amazon, buy it somewhere else. And then also uh, Flat Earth FAQ by Eric Dubay is also a great book if you just want to get the, the basics. But, but yeah, really, um, I really appreciate, you know, you having this conversation. I love an open mind to talk about something that's this controversial at times. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, this, this was super fun. I like, I will talk about any of these topics and I don't care if everyone says like, she's a flat earther or she's a moon space. I call myself a moon space denier. But anyways, <laughs> you know, I don't care. I'm like, let's have fun about it it's whatever i'm gonna get sued for 10 okay. trillion dollars okay we can all share time, um <laughs> we'll share rooms at the fema camp together when they lock us up in teams <laughs> exactly we will be there well thank you so much and we'll have to do this again soon and thank you everyone who uh logged in i appreciate it and y'all have a great rest of your easter enjoy your families uh you know obviously we know the reason for the day Thank you to God. Thank you, Jesus, for our, all of us being here. And whoever said, somebody said, you speak the gospel. Will you speak the gospel? Yes. Thank, thank you. you. So, Have a good night. Rest.